hello again and thank you all for your participation over the last hour and a half. Uh, the issues being discussed this evening are a really important part of our internal party democracy. Um, and thank you, Sheila, for chairing so ably. Um, this weekend will be her last as party chair and her contribution once again over the last three years has been hugely valued by all of us. We now move... The scale of the death and destruction in Gaza over the last four months has been horrifying beyond words. Nearly 100,000 Palestinians have been killed, wounded, or reporting missing, missing in Gaza since Israel began its military operation three months ago. Almost 30,000 people have been confirmed dead, two thirds of them women and children. 1.5 million people, over half of Gaza's population, fled to the city of Rafa, taking whatever shelter they can find, often in tents, makeshift shelters, because they were told that it would be safe. But there is no safety in Gaza. No safety from hunger, thirst or disease, and certainly no safety from Israeli missiles or an impending ground invasion. Witnessing the unchecked cruelty of the Israeli government as they carry out a genocide in full view of the world has exposed many Western leaders for their weak commitment to those values of human rights and international law. Israeli missiles have targeted schools, hospitals, UN facilities, places of worship, and critical civilian infrastructure. The bombing of refugee camps and residential neighborhoods causing the deaths of dozens or hundreds of civilians is repeatedly justified by Israel, claiming that they have taken out one or two high-level Hamas targets. The absolute disregard for Palestinian lives is appalling. And their excuses fall flat because we can see and we can hear Israel's true intent. Senior Israeli government officials, including the Prime Minister, the President and the Minister for Defence, have clearly expressed genocidal intent. And it is on us, on every country, to act when we hear that. No armed attack on a state's territory even the atrocity committed by Hamas on October 7th can ever justify breaches of the Genocide Convention. There is no greater crime on earth. And as a signatory of the Genocide Convention, Ireland has an obligation to punish genocide and to prevent it. As a party, the Social Democrats have done what we can to bring attention to pressure on this government to act by bringing forward two dual motions and raising this issue week after week after week with government leaders. At every opportunity, the government refused our calls to act. But little by little, they seem to be moving towards taking more concrete actions against Israel and Europe. It's a pity it's been slow and they've had to effectively be pushed into doing it by parties in opposition, because while the Irish state drags its feet, an average of 250 Palestinians are being killed in Gaza by Israel every single day. We will continue to do what we can to pressure the Irish government and other countries to match their words with action. Our consciousness wouldn't allow us to do anything less. The Irish people have sent a clear and unequivocal message of support for the Palestinian people throughout this horror. Given that level of support and given the depth of feeling amongst our members about this issue, there is no more appropriate person we could invite to be the first speaker at our conference this weekend. Can I ask you all to please give an especially warm welcome to her? A welcome that reflects the support of this party and the majority 
of the people in Ireland for the people of Palestine. Ladies and gentlemen, the Palestinian ambassador to Ireland, Dr. Jalan Waba Abdal Majid. Thank you very much. I have a great honor to be tonight with you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you tonight. I would like as well to take this opportunity to extend my sincere thanks to the party leader, Deputy Holly Currens, and all the Social Democrat supporters, and of course the team and the deputies of the Social Democrats. I would like as well before I um, uh, go on with my speech today, I uh, owe a great gratitude to Ireland and to the Irish people for their constant and strong support to justice and human rights and to the just cause of the Palestinian people. Their constant support to UNRWA. And I know that Ireland yesterday, as many of the international community and uh, states, they suspend their uh, support to UNRWA Ireland was among those who still believe on the vital role of UNRWA and increase the support even for UNRWA to 20 million euros. I owe Ireland and the Irish people a great uh, gratitude. Thank you, Ireland. Thank you, the Irish people. And thank you, the Social Democrats, for having me tonight with you. Today... Today, Palestine is facing one of the most difficult times in our recent history. Palestine and the Palestinians are facing another Nakba, another ethnic cleansing, another, another forced displacement. Palestinians are facing systematic genocide. Today, I will speak about Palestine. Palestine is my homeland. Palestine that is since 1948 facing only one Israeli plan is disposition, displacement, and seizure of total control of, the river, of, of Palestine from the river to the sea and the implementation of its supremacist and colonial control. The world cuts the question of Palestine short, stating it as merely Gaza, Rafah, Jabalia, Khan Yunis, and the humanitarian aid. We are a just cause, and our Palestinian people deserve to live and have the right <laughs> and have the right to live free in their in their land. Today, I want to shed light on the injustice, the oppression, and the colonization that Palestinians have endured for decades. I want to talk about the denial of our rights to self-determination and liberation. Today, I want to raise awareness on why the 7th of October happened and the root cause of this issue. The land of Palestine is not disputed. It is colonized. What happened on the 7th of October did not come out of thin air. It's due to the continued Israeli occupation of Palestine and the continuation of their policies of persecution and daily repression. It's the blockage of a serious political horizon. It is the denial of the Palestinian right to self-determination. This has been our narrative for more than 75 years. And we, the Palestinians, 
see that it's even started before the Nakba in 1948, or even before the Balfour Declaration in 1917, when the British government promised to establish a homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine. The Zionist project has been active since, 18th, since the 18th century. There was Jewish immigration and colonization in Palestine since then. In 1882, the first colony that called Rishon Lezion was built on the expropriated land of Ayun Qara. It's a small village in Palestine. Today, there are more than 250 colonies and outposts with more than 600,000 colonial settlers living in those settlements that have been and are still built on the confiscated lands owned by the Palestinians in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. As the world focuses on the war in Gaza, pressure is mounting on the West Bank. More than 330 Palestinians have been killed, more than 6,400 Palestinians arrested and taken in captive. This is addition to the 4,600 to the 4,600 4, political prisoners who were already in jails, in Israeli jails, suffering the torture of the Israeli far-right policies. Colonial settler violence in the occupied West Bank has doubled since the 7th of October. The United States, the United Kingdom, and France have announced sanctions on four Israeli settlers accused of committing human rights abuse against Palestinians in the West Bank. This is not enough but maybe we can consider it as a good beginning, a good start. On the 7th of October was a product of the oppression, disposition, colonization, and the nightmare that has been seen for 17 years of blockade of Gaza by Israel. Gaza has been an open air prison for more, for over 2 million Palestinians who live in, this, in, in that area, uh, the size uh, of a county Louth here in Ireland and the blockade was since, as I said, 2007. We, the Palestinian, reject the killing or taking hostages of innocent civilians. I just wanted to assure and always reaffirm this position of us, the Palestinian people, the Palestinian leadership. However, what has unfolded since the 7th of October, supposedly in response to the attacks on Israeli soldiers and civilians, has gone far beyond what the Prime Minister of Israel and his far-right government has described as self-defense. It has gone beyond rage and revenge. What we witness today is actual genocide and forced displacement. For almost five months, the people of Gaza have been exposed to the most savage and barbaric aggression in our history. It's our Nakba 23. The ongoing live-streamed massacre deliberately, systematically, and savagely perpetrated by Israel against the Palestinian civilian population under its illegal colonial apartheid occupation continues unabated with no ceasefire in the horizons. The Palestinian people have suffered unimaginable trauma and loss with nearly 29,000 Palestinians massacred. The majority of them are children and women. This genocidal war so far has led to over 70,000 people injured. Thousands are still under the rubble. In the, four, in the past four and a half months, Israel dropped more than 66,000 tons of explosives, bombs. Its, bombarding, its bombardment had surpassed the annual number of children killed in global conflict zone ever, ever, ever since 19, 20, 2019. Today, after four and a half months, we face the most dangerous stage in this genocidal war. More than 1.4 million have been displaced only in the Rafah city. Rafah city is 55 kilometers, square kilometers, and now used to, be, used to have like more than uh, 200,000 uh, people who lived in Rafah, now Rafah, it's more than 1.4 million who were displaced since the 7th of October. The intention is to forcibly displace them to Egypt, flattening Gaza and annexing it to Israel to achieve their biblical dream of the Jewish state. As a humanitarian needs and pressure 
Mount and Rafah and Israeli attacks escalate. The risks are growing for, mass, for a mass exodus of desperate families or forced transfer of the Palestinian population by Israel. This is a real and present danger that continue to be threatened by Israeli government officials who don't hide their aims to depopulate and settle in Gaza. Last week, the Israeli Prime Minister announced that he has commanded his Israeli occupying forces to evacuate the population in Rafah and to destroy the, battalion, the battalions that Israel claims are present there. Actually, they were since the beginning of the 7th of October. They forced more than 1.9 million Palestinians, saying that going from the north to the south as if there is a safe place. And now they put all the people in the area of Rafah, which, as I said, it's 55 square kilometers adjacent to the, uh, to the, to the Egyptian border. The manifestation of these dangerous threats is upon as undeterred Israeli pushes forward for its criminal plans to once again force the Palestinian people out of their land. The international community, apart from some nation, including Ireland, has failed us. And I say as well, humanity failed us. As the UN Secretary General has said, this is a crisis of humanity. I was born and raised in Gaza by a refugee family, just like 750,000 Palestinians forcibly expelled from their land in 1948. I live in Ireland and proudly represent my people as the ambassador of Palestine since 2020. I'm very lucky and honored to be contained by the Irish people at this most difficult time. I'm thousands of kilometers away from the seaside that I love so much in Gaza. I can't even imagine how my family, my friends, and all my people in Gaza have been feeling. No, no, no words will ever be able to describe the misery and the catastrophe that they are enduring in Gaza. The Israeli occupation commits war crimes, and the whole world is witnessing a life genocide. I would like here to stop to say as well, thank you to South Africa. South Africa. <laughs> so South Africa took a very strong stance to bring Israel for the first time in its life to the ICJ. And the, the case was accepted and uh, Israel attended and the, prov the provisional measures was adopted. And we wish that the whole, uh, the international community uh, take measures to force Israel to stop this barbaric war against Gaza. And it seems that we live in a world that because there is no limit and there is political coverage for Israel, Israel is acting with impunity. And after four and a half months, no one in this world managed to stop Israel. However, with all this support that I see here in Ireland, and we see millions of uh, the international uh, community, the people, normal people, the nations, protest to support justice. I don't want to say just support Palestinians, but they protest for justice, for human rights. The human rights violation in Palestine is huge, and we need the voices of everyone in this world to continue to speak about Palestine, about the injustice in Palestine. The whole world sees the slaughter of the Palestinians in Gaza, but has continuously failed to stop this bloodshed. I used to believe in international law and UN bodies. Today, I see nothing prevailing in this world except that the brutality of power now rules. Humanity will be something that we only recognize from the past, and I feel very sorry to say that. However, I really uh, value, I mean, every person on this earth that protest for Palestine. Their voices are really very strong, but we need to continue that. But it seems that the international community, the governments are far away from the people. Every single day, Israel proves the inherent violence, racism, and persecution of its occupation, its colonial and apartheid nature, and its objective to wipe out the Palestinian are, uh, are undeniable. 
It shows the inherent terror and extremism of this occupation, its total illegality and aggression in every manifestation. It's a constant assault on the lives, rights, dignity, and existence of the Palestinian people, which started well before October the 7th and has continued every single minute since. No one should be fooled by Israel's claims of sparing civilians' lives. Israel targets and doesn't spare any human beings, buildings, hospitals, schools, universities, mosques, and churches. 60% of the buildings in Gaza have been turned into rubble or and are partially destroyed, making Gaza uninhabitable. And actually, this is the goal and the main goal of Israel, to make Gaza unlivable, force the Palestinian to leave, force them either uh, by force or by voluntary. Even the bodies of those who are dead and buried are not respected, as Israel continues to bulldoze and dig up graves, defiling and dismembering bodies, refusing to even let them rest in peace and causing further trauma to their grieving families, if they have any surviving. Many of the people in Gaza have had their homes destroyed in previous assaults. Now they have lost the homes that they built and rebuilt for themselves and their families. They mourn their city, they mourn the Gaza Strip as all its landmark have been destroyed. Every place of which people enjoyed happy memories have been disfigured. Every corner is filled with agony, death and suffering. In almost five months, almost four and a half, we are in the, in the fifth month, virtually every Palestinian in Gaza has been displaced multiple times from a home to a UN shelter to a tent, searching for safety everywhere, finding safety nowhere, no. searching for life anywhere, met by death everywhere. I would like to focus here for a minute on our children who are being targeted in this war. Our children are being deliberately killed so far However, I don't like to speak about numbers. It's more than 12,000 ch child shredding, shredding their bodies to pieces or crushing them under tons of rubble. They are being wounded, maimed, starved, orphaned, displaced, left to die from disease, infections, illness, and cold. We have more than 25,000 orphans in Gaza. The children of Palestine are being traumatized psychologically, physically, emotionally. They are witnessing their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers blown to bits by Israeli missiles and bombs, striking Gaza nonstop over the past four months. When I say children, I mean that out of over a million child, 40% of them are under the age of 15 years old. There is now in Gaza more than 55,000 pregnant women. And since the October the 7th, there has been 20,000 children have been born. So the Palestinians continue to give birth, even though, I mean, with sore, like, you know, our children who were killed. But the Palestinians will continue to bring more children to defend our right to be in this land free. We have been forced... We have been forced to live without education, without learning. They are witnessing the humiliation of their parents and elders and the dehumanization of their entire people, a nation under occupation, apartheid, siege, and now targeted by genocide. It took 75 years for the United Nations to finally recognize the Nakba, the catastrophe of the Palestinian people. Instead of seeing the Nakba end, our people are yet again confronted with large-scale massacre aimed at forcibly displace them. And the Nakba continues. The time is long past for immediate collective action to halt Israel's war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide against our people. It's the time for genuine practical measures to stop this absolute inhumanity, stop the killing, stop the forced transfer, Stop the destructions and devastation. It's the time for accountability. 
It's the time for ceasefire. It's the time for protection. It's the time for humanity to prevail. Not a minute more can be lost. We must save human lives and stop the downward spiral to hell that Israel is insisting to drag our people and the entire region to. There is absolutely no justification for what has been happening to the Palestinian people. It's time to raise our voice for justice. It's time to raise our voice for human rights. It's time to say enough is enough. It's time to stop this war. It's time to end this occupation. It's time to recognize the state of Palestine. It's time for our people to live free in their land and raise our children without fear, trauma, or war. We deserve life, as I said and will continue to say. We deserve to live in peace and security without any threat, without occupation, without colonial settlers in our state of Palestine on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as our capital. We deserve life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a great honor. Thank you.